Well, it's exciting times and we're back for the start of a new season. We're here at Turf Moor, champions of the Championship versus champions of the Premier League. An outstanding fixture to start the season with. But the big news today is that Harry Kane is, well, surprisingly to me and you, on his way to Germany. Well, he is. I mean, I, I thought he would maybe, you know, hold on for the extra year, maybe go for free. I, you know, the Premier League record in the back of my mind of how that affected his, uh, his move. But, no, listen, Bayern Munich, one of the biggest clubs in the world. They are one of the, the teams who I think realistically every season have a chance of winning the Champions League. And the big thing for me with Harry Kane going there was all about the Champions League, not winning the Bundesliga. Bayern Munich will win that without Harry Kane. But a player of his quality should be playing Champions League football, which is the highest quality for me anywhere you can play. And he's going to guarantee that for the next sort of three or four years but I mean the, the big advantage for me in terms of going to uh, Bayern Munich is the actual winter break that they have in Germany in terms of for England in the summer you've got the European Championships I think in Germany as well and hopefully that'll bode well for his, his international career I mean you say we were both surprised I mean what, what do you think that the pros and cons are of it? No, I, I thought he would, exactly as you, I thought that he would try and use the Bayern Munich offer to establish a price and then he would try and, try and stay in this country. And that wasn't meaning being disrespectful to Bayern Munich. I just saw his pathway and his route to that, you know, breaking that record, that Alan Shearer's record in the Premier League has been something that Harry Kane would absolutely be laser focused on. So for me, he's going to a great football club. Um, you know, he will compete in the Champions League this season, but I did think he would stay either for an extra year or he would try and use the acceptance of a prize from Bayern Munich to establish a prize that maybe then an English club could come in. But there's another big transfer that's uh, going on at the moment and there's a tug of war going on, it would seem, between <laughs> your club Liverpool, Chelsea and obviously Brighton are involved in that with regards to Casado. And it's become a little bit... It's become a little bit of a mess, hasn't it, in the last 24 hours? Yeah, I mean... I mean, to be honest, I think when you think of Liverpool needing a midfield player or anyone really in the Premier League, I think he'd be one of the names that jump out at you straight away. But it's to be fair to Chelsea, I think they've been in the running for you know sort of two or three months. And if he he wants to go to Chelsea and he's given them his word and he's already agreed and spoke to the manager, he's agreed wages and different things, and he doesn't want to sort of break that promise, you can say, well, okay, fair enough. But Liverpool have come in a late stage because they couldn't get the deal done for Lavi or they didn't want to play a certain price. Uh, the price is big. But I think for Chelsea or Liverpool, certainly from Liverpool's point of view, they're probably more desperate than Chelsea. And when you think of the figures now for a holding midfield player, I think we both questioned Enzo Fernandez in, in the January transfer windows, thinking over 100 million for that player. But then Declan Rice goes for 105. Uh, Moses uh, Saicedo is going to go now for 110, it looks like, either to Chelsea or Liverpool. It almost feels like Chelsea almost started that uh, that craze with, with that type of money. But yeah, I'm desperate for him to come to Liverpool because I think the need for him at Liverpool is probably greater than Chelsea, hence the uh, you know the player I've just mentioned that they've got. But it's uh, it's going to be a big blow for whoever loses out. But the feeling is at the moment, obviously, we're listening to social media, it's like real-time sort of, if you like, monitoring of this situation. It feels to me, or it seems to us, like he's told Brighton that he doesn't want to go to Liverpool and that he absolutely does want to go to Chelsea. I mean, that's a big blow for Liverpool. One, obviously turning them down is one thing, but Liverpool have been so precise in the transfer market in the last six or seven years. For them to go in for a player that they don't know that they've connected with to come to their club seems like a little embarrassing in terms of where Liverpool have been in the transfer market over the last five or six years. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we've had this discussion about Liverpool's ownership. We probably see it from you know a different point of view, but the fact remains Liverpool's ownership were, were willing to sanction you know the British transfer record in terms of bringing this player in. But... To make that bid for a club and not know that the player wants to come is not something that is done. As I, you said, I, last I'm not being from initially either. I know. For me, when you actually look at it, when you think of you, you go to your second option, for me, Saicedo should have always been Liverpool's first option. And if they couldn't get him and Chelsea got him fair enough, then you go to maybe Lavia at Southampton. It feels like it's it's almost the wrong way round, and they may have to go back to Southampton now, maybe pay the 50 million that they were, you know, willing to sanction. But I mean, I think there's there's definitely something going on in the background with the agent. Obviously. We shouldn't forget here, Saicedo was a young lad. He's getting pushed from pillar to post. Uh, he's obviously getting a lot of advice from different people and everyone's, you know, got their own, what they want uh, for the player as well. So whatever he decides, I think he should be respected. And yeah, there's a lot of speculation, but, you know, whoever he chooses, he's going to go to a great club. But I can understand if he does go to Chelsea because he's given the word and fair enough to the lad. Yeah. But you talk about embarrassment in terms of Casado potentially, Liverpool coming in from and then not choosing Liverpool. Is it not a double embarrassment that they've actually come in for a young player at Southampton 
almost, if you like, scrimped around a little bit and fell a few million short, said, OK, we're going to leave you now. I'm going to go for a sort of, if you like, a £100 million pound sign. And he's turned them down. Then they're having to go back to the boy Lavia at no. Southampton. Is that a little no. bit embarrassing no. again? Well, we don't know if they will go back. They, they probably will, but you're saying they're scrimping and saving for Lavia. They've obviously got the money. They just Liverpool's ownership is about what they feel is trying to get value for money. And, and if they need to go really big, as they have done in the past with Virgil van Dijk or Alisson, if they think someone's really worth it, they will do it. And that's obviously what they've felt with Saicedo. The thing with Lavia is not that they haven't got the money. They, they're willing to pay double for another midfield player. It's that they felt that it wasn't value for them, mm. that they didn't value him at 50 million. Now, they may have to go back and, and pay that. But as I've just said, we've discussed that, we've got different opinions on it. But I've never felt money was the biggest problem at Liverpool. It was they always want to try and get as much value as they possibly can, get the right player at the right time. And I back that. But as I said, the biggest problem for me right now in terms of Liverpool getting transfers done is not the ownership in terms of money, it's actually the structure of the club. That's changed so often in the last sort of 12, 18 months. And Liverpool Liverpool right now have a not a permanent director of football. He's just here for the summer, and then Liverpool will try and fill that position. You know, when the season gets going, and that's not ideal. Look, there's 200 million pound signings, obviously, that are going to happen potentially in the next 24 hours. But Burnley aren't in that space. But they're back in the Premier League tonight with Vincent Company. Really exciting for them. Yeah, I think he's one of those great players that, in some ways, you'd always hope would go into manager because you feel he's just got that presence, uh, you know, that respect around the game that he'll always do a good job. And I think the job he did here last season to completely change Burnley, the style of football, the players that he had. Obviously, they did really well in the low market as well, helped by Manchester City. But I'm really excited to watch them. And more often than not, a team like Burnley, who dominate the Champions, normally come into the Premier League and do really well. So I think it would be good to see Vincent Company up against the, the master tonight, Pep Guardiola, a huge influence on him. But there's no way I think Burnley will change or do anything different to what they did last season because they're playing Manchester City. So a fascinating spectacle. And up against the Manchester City, you reached Utopia last season with a treble. I'll ask you one question on them. Are they better this season as they start the season than they were when they ended last season with obviously the ins and outs that have occurred? No, I don't think so. I think they were possibly stronger last season. I think they've lost a a couple of top players. I think Mahrez just fell out the team towards the end of last season, but I mean, Gundogan was probably one of the best players in the country, I think, towards the end of that season. But I mean, they brought a top defender in. Uh, he looks like the real deal. Obviously, we know uh, Kovacic coming from Chelsea, he's a, he's a good player, but right now, I would say the the weaker, but there's still plenty of time in the window. Anyway, join us at 6 30 tonight. We're here at Turf Moor for the start of a brand new season. They're squeezing a little half an hour more out of us, but that means that you get half an hour more as well. Sky Sports main event, Sky Sports football, and Ev and Sky Sports Showcase as well, or Sky Showcase. Every single channel we're on tonight, it's going to be a brilliant season. We've got Chelsea and Liverpool on Sunday. We've got who we've got tomorrow night at 5.30. Newcastle Aston Villa. Newcastle you Aston be Villa, aware of that. which should be fantastic. And we've got a Monday night football. So it's a packed weekend. Join us, and we're going to wander back up that tunnel and get ready for the show.